Alright, I've got everything I need, so I've come all the way back to Mexico for this guy, so he can build his glider. Hey, come here. Oh, hello again, sir. Oh, you are kind. Thank you for bringing me these materials. I'll be cooking up a batch of adhesive in no time. Glad to be of service. You let me know when your machine's ready for your maiden voyage. Oh, I will indeed, sir. I'd like witnesses to the glory of man soaring through the air like an eagle. An eagle, sir! Oh, my name's not Charles Kinnear. Return to Charles in a couple days. Alright. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'll go over here. Um, go to sleep. And see if, um... Well, not see, wait until that mission's available to do. And then I'll head back, rather than like go off and doing something else and then come back later. I'll just go over here and sleep for however long and then return. Because it's had like a couple days. Alright, get out of my way. What'd you say? Alright, let's go to sleep. And then if it's not, well, I won't. I won't be surprised if it's not there now. Oh, no. Yeah, so it's not there. Right, back to sleep. I might have to do it a few times. Right, still not there. Back to sleep again. Actually, hang on, what am I doing? Did it auto save afterwards? Yeah, so let me just go and load the auto save and then it should come up after that. Yep. Rather than just. Oh. Let's go. To Daedalus and Son. Let's see if Kinnear's machine, not even though, it's not even a machine, it's literally just like wooden paper. Because of course when they first made planes they called them kites because they were literally like plastic and, not plastic, they were literally like um, wooden paper, like kites. Or string and shit. But this is more of a glider though. Right, let's see how he how he's doing. Person who merely watches the flight of a bird gathers the impression that the bird has nothing more to think of than the flapping of its wings. As a matter of fact, this is only a very small part of its mental labor. Hmm, to even mention all the things a bird must constantly keep in mind in order to fly securely through the air would take the better part of a day. The bird has learned this art of equilibrium and learned it so thoroughly that its skill is not apparent to our sight. We only learn to appreciate it when we try to imitate it. And I, Charles Kinnear, will now demonstrate here the miracle of flight. Into the wild blue yonder, Marston. <laughs> Well, he died. <laughs> I mean, it was working at first, he was going, and then he just went straight down. Well. And that was that. I'm going to head down there. See if I can loot his body or something. And then after that, I'll get a stagecoach and head back to Blackwater. And do some more uh, missions. Like it worked at first. It was working, he was gliding, and then all of a sudden he just went straight down. Yeah, I'm too busy. Piss off. 
Uh, there he is. Uh, fuck off. Uh, where's his body? Dumbass wolves. Where's his body gone? I thought his body was right there, but I guess it's gone? What? Are you dumb? Fuck off. Well. Well, now it's completely wrecked. And it's not like it's that far away anyway, at least from the time period this is set in, where planes actually become a thing. Because what, like, year are we in? Like, I don't know. It's not that far away from, like, planes being made. Right, anyway. Time to get a stagecoach and head all the way to Blackwater and let's do some more stuff with McDougal. Let's see what that crackhead's got this time. Since the last time we were with him, didn't um, that Nastus guy, he got shot right in the face. Well, I mean, it was hardly a good idea for that meeting anyway. Because what was the point of it, though? And I don't know how much longer this game's got left. I don't think it's that much more. Like, I think I'm past, like, halfway, for sure. And this is, like, the last part of the game. Professor! Oh, it's you, dear boy. Come in, come in, and shut the door. What's going on? You leaving? Yes, sir. Yes, I am, sir. You know, you know the thing? The thing that is vital, without which scholarship cannot proceed, sir? No, I don't. Not having a bullet in your flipping neck, sir. I am not cut out for this. No, I'm not cut out for this at all. <laughs> nope. They're fucking savages! Savages! I think we all are. Not me, sir. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a professor at Yale. I write books. I do not deserve to die out here. Where's my tincture? Oh, yes. You okay, Professor? Oh, dandy, sir. Just dandy. Oh, great heavens above! Is that you, John? Hello, Dutch. <laughs> I think that's what they call two for the price of one out here in this wonderful place. Maybe so, Dutch. You and, and, and your friend there, the professor? We're going to kill the both of you. <laughs> Why you want to do a thing like that? I don't know. Sport, I guess. Fair enough. Why don't I come out there? We fight. Let the professor go and send your boys back to their family. Well, that, that sounds like a beautiful plan, John. Only problem is, my boys here, they already lost their families a long time ago. We aren't thieves, John. We're fighting for something a bit like you. Only we're fighting for an idea. Not just for ourselves. That's beautiful, Dutch. You always were a fine speaker. I was. Now, would you kindly send that academic out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? Please, sir, what are we going to do? I'm going to hand you over to him and watch him tear you limb from limb. What? I'm just kidding. We're going to run across the rooftops. Get you back to your ivory tower. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. We're still here. Come on. Oh. 
Good day, sir. Uh, madam. Look here, sir. What is the meaning of this, this outrage? You two stay down and shut up. Dumb bitch, what are you screaming for? Shut up. And we got to see Dutch again. After the last time we saw him, he shot John in the face. But luckily the binoculars took the impact. You bitch. Shut up. We're fine. Relax. Oh, shit. Oh, I need to stay in cover. I'm about to die. Alright, that's done. done. How did that miss? Come on, you scrubs. You need to be careful. Come on, just peek around the corner. How did that miss? There you go. Alright, that's what him done. Jesus Christ. Why does Dutch want to kill McDougal so bad? Oh fuck. Alright, I'm good. Where are the police at? Like with Dutch and all his boys out here just causing a ruckus all the shooting. Oh, there you are, but... A bit late now, isn't it? Well, you'd be safer here than Manzanita Post. You got some good material for your next book. You know, I dreamt of documenting the last days of the Old West, the romance, the honor, the nobility. But it turns out it's just people killing each other. It always was, Professor. And the Old West ain't quite dead yet. Oh, I know, Mr. Marston. Believe me, I know. Any worse? Yes. For you, maybe. Oh, there's more of them. Oh, fuck. I went to go... Uh, I went to take some medicine then, but by the time I went to take medicine, I got shot in the back. And that's so dumb how they're able to, like... Get so many shots on me, but when I'm trying to shoot them, like I'm like constantly like having to switch around because like horse keeps moving in different directions. Um, even when I shoot at them, sometimes it doesn't always hit them. All right, come on, let's kill these guys this time. Alright, there I go. Get as far away from here as 
humanly possible. Back to where people eat with knives and forks and don't spend every second of the day trying to kill each other. Here we are. Finally. Ah, my research is complete. Much as I thought, there's no civilizing this savage land. I could have told you that for nothing. Ah, but they'll give me a prize in New Haven for this. <laughs> well, they bloody better. Well, goodbye, Mr. Marston. Best of luck, dear friend. So long, Professor. So long, sir. Nice. One hundred dollars. And I doubt the professor's gonna get a prize for anything, apart from being the most crackhead there is. The most addicting professor crackhead. Like, the state of his arms should say it all. Like, his arms look like it were covered in blood. And the amount of times he's, like, syringed himself with cocaine. Alright, now that's done. Am I able to do this mission? No, it doesn't look like it. Right, well, I mean, I could sleep here, but I think I'll just head to Blackwater since it's closer and sleep there for the night. And I was, well, I was going to say it was good to see Dutch, but not really, since he wants to kill us. That and he's like got a bunch of like natives with him because obviously like John said he's a good speaker so obviously he's like said the right things to get them to join him get them riled up fighting all this civilization and were people really like this back in those days like they really thought they were doing natives a favor bringing them civilization making them into productive farmers or whatever the fuck even though, like John said, they've been living on these lands for like hundreds of years and then these people come along, killing them all, taking all their land and then like destroying all their reservations. Oh. Don't fucking do it. Don't. I swear, dog, if you try. Are you trying? What are you doing? Alright, stop. Do you want to sit? Stop. Alright, let's go. There's so many dogs around here and, no and they all look malnourished. Right, now let's... Uh Get a room for the night. Alright, excuse me. Get move. Not now. Alright, let me get some more ammo too. Alright. To sleep. Is it daytime? No, I still think it's nighttime. Alright, back to sleep again. It should be daytime after this one. There we go, now it's daytime. Yeah, now the mission's available. Get out the way! Why are you all congesting in that one spot? Alright, so what are we doing this time? Are we going after Dutch? What's happening? Like, you think, what have these dumbasses been up to? You think Dutch was in the town? What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Marston. An informer just told us some interesting news. Our mutual friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, is about to pay call on his bank manager. What do you say to having a little financial discussion with the fellow? This way. Let's get up on the roof. We'll have a clear shot at them from there.
All right, guess we're on the roof. Well, I've got my sniper rifles. That door is the only way in and out of the building. So cover it tight. Do you see those horses to the left by the building across the street? Dutch's boys hitched them there. They'll have to run that way to make their escape. Don't start shooting until they're out in the open. If we spook them, they might retreat back and hole up inside. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Keep your sights trained on that bank door. I hope you know who you're dealing with, mister. Nobody shoots until I say. Yeah, you just said that. Shoot. That man is a hostage. Is he a hostage? They shot him dead. They're coming out. Gun them down. Oh shit. What the hell? Where are they shoot me from? Got some making a break for it. Get them. No one's running. Come on. Got him. Any more of them trying to run out? Yep. Oh, let's fuck them up. Oh, I see him. Oh, shit. Go this way. Got him. Yeah, let me just loot that bodies real quick. seen her for a while because you've been chasing me let the woman go Dutch of course of course how's your little boy he ain't so little now no he must be what 15 16 doesn't time fly don't adjust it's over man of course of course. I surrendered, John. You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. We all make mistakes, John. I never claimed to be a saint. But equally, I never took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch. By making compromises, we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You want the girl, John? You always were the romantic sort. You know, gentlemen, this man here, oh, he married a whore. Used to ride with us. We all had her. Oh, <laughs> but he married her. And you know that makes him a better man than us. 
He's a better man. Have the girl, John. Easy, Dutch. She's a parting gift from me. No! God damn! Motherfucker! I don't see him! What the hell happened in there? This is your fault, Marston! Fuck you! you. How's that my fault? You waited too long! How did I wait? I'll just shoot the girl. Yeah, you dickhead! The fuck? How are you gonna blame me for that, you piece of shit? Don't blame me for your incompetence, you dumbass pigs. I thought you guys were covering the entrance. I thought you guys were covering the entrance. How'd you let them get away? Sure we are. The understanding being that we don't like you as much as we don't like Dutch. No, it's the feds. They never give straight answers. Oh shit. Off the horses. Get into cover. How's he still alive? Come on, pop your head up. Chuck some dynamite at them. Charge up one of the next QO. He got away. Uh, scared to shoot him? Too much to handle? When the opportunity presents itself, I'll put a bullet in him, don't you worry. Won't like myself for doing it, but I'll do it. Ah, good man, good man. You know, at the end of this, you'll probably get a medal. I know I shall. Fucking feds. Fuck them. Fuck them all. They're no better than these guys we just killed. So now I'm going to loot all their dead bodies. Get some money, get some ammo. But how did Dutch even get away? Because like, you think those guys were covering the entrance. That's what they were doing before 
like shit started popping off and then it's like we go inside three guys even though it'd be more appropriate to have three guys on the roof with sniper rifles and then the rest go inside with like revolvers and like other like repeaters and stuff and then it's like he managed to get away because you dumbasses were doing what like I thought they were watching the entrance and then they're not like what the fuck And then what were those two guys on about? Saying it was John's fault when Dutch shot that girl. It's like, you could have done something, and you didn't. John did the same thing you did. You're trying to act like John did something different to you, which made the situation happen. Like, what? Dickheads. But I think we're, like, getting close to the ending of the game. Can't be that far from the end now. I think we're slowly closing in. Like, how many of these, like, guys does Dutch even have? Like, we've killed, like, dozens of them. And there's still loads of them. Well, I don't think there's, not, like, much left to this. It'll probably all be over soon. But of course, it doesn't end the way you hope it would end. Of course it not. Like, not with the feds. When does it ever end like the way they say it would? Like, it only ends when they say it ends, right? I don't know. I feel like John... I don't know. John maybe should have like decided not to work with the feds, instead just kill them, kill all of them, and just live his life as a wanted man. Like, you think he already is a wanted man, in a way. You think he should have killed the feds and got his family. You know, and just go on the run. Be better than working for the feds. Alright, anyway, let's do this mission. What do you want, Marston? My family. I've done what you asked. <laughs> no, you haven't. This is the land of opportunity, and I gave you the opportunity to save your family, and you failed. How could I possibly reward you? Marston? You're a public menace. We should have had you killed. I wish you had. But since you didn't, where's my family? Oh, spare me the noble savage fall on the sword tripe, will you, oh boy? It's nauseating. You don't wish to be dead. You're an insignificant creature desperately clinging on to life like the rest of the scum in this town. Yeah, I know, it's tough. You like Dutch. He's a charming fellow. He makes sense. He's like one of those nature writers from back east. Only he takes things a tiny little step too far. Rather than just loving the flowers and the animals and the harmony between man and beast, <laughs> he shoots people in the head for money and disagreeing with them. He's a goddamn killer. Now. I'm not a great intellect, but the metaphysical leap from admiring the flower to shooting a man in the head because he doesn't like the flower is a leap too far. So, I know it's easy. <laughs> you see, we, me and Archer, we're the bad guys. We enforce the rules. Now, while the rules may not be perfect, they're really not so bad. Exactly. What's the alternative? <laughs> See, I'll tell you what the alternative is. It's not complicated. It's about one man and his gun versus another man. <laughs> sure. Civilization may be dull, 
But the alternative, Mr. Marston, is hell. And the way you enforce this civilization, this freedom for men to like or not like flowers, or whatever in God's name you were just talking about, is to kidnap a man's wife and son? Well, I know there's contradictions. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> As I said, I'm not a great intellect. Now, after the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Will you help us? Do I have any choice? Now that you mention it, no. Then what was that pretty speech in aid of? I don't rightly know, but it sure felt good saying it. <laughs> Shall we, Mr. Marston? Let's go. Yeah, I know. Look at this armored car with this machine gun. Look at all the people coming out. I know. These people are so shocked at this armored car. Yep. So now we got the army helping us out to take down Dutch. You sure about that? The army has made camp a little way outside town. They put word out a large cache of ammunition and food is stored there. Vandalin's gang needs constant supplies, so that should be enough to draw them in. No mistakes this time. You hear me, Marston? I thought you were talking to Fordham. Wow, so they got the army out in force to take down Vandalin. It's one thing to be a gang taking on, like, the local law or the feds, but it's another to take on the army. Because you think crime's more of a police thing, not an army. But if... What's the word, Captain? Oh. We spotted one of Dutch's men about an hour ago. I think he took the bait. Let's get in position, then. Have your men ready to run them down. If you have to. Wow. Are you ready to finish this, Mr. Marston? I guess so. Oh, well, we just waiting. This is going to be a massacre. What, are you two just going to sit in there? Cowards. Targets on the horizon. Oh, Fire there they come. I thought you wanted to kill me! This is so fucking cool! Oh shit! Well, why aren't you two out of your little confined armored space and out here helping us? Wow, 
Wow, they got absolutely destroyed. But I can't shoot them if you've got the car in the front. Don't let him get too close. Oh shit. They don't stand a chance. That wagon's out of control. It's coming straight out of our cover. Not anymore. Well, Mr. Marston, it seems like your mentor, Dutch, no longer looks quite so kindly to a student. That man is insane. So it seems. I think we need to get him before sundown. As you say, Captain. Otherwise, he'll be gone again. And what if I say no? <laughs> now, before I shoot you myself, let me just point out the obvious. The one person we have left that can appeal to Mr. Vanderlyn is the last person we know who knows him. Your wife. That won't be necessary. Mr. Ross, Captain, let's go. <clears throat> Mount up, man. Let's move out. Ross is such a piece of shit. Well, and it seems like they took out the armor car too. It wasn't so good after all. And I saw that guy as well, and I was shooting at him. But I, I guess. I believe has built himself a fortress in the mountains. He's crazy, but he certainly ain't stupid. You've already seen that place, right? McDougal told me you went up there with that Indian chap. I've seen it, all right. We'll be lucky to last five minutes with this many men. Well, I mean, he can only last so long. What's he got to do with any of this? Let's just say he has a vested interest in cleaning the filth out of this region. I don't think our old friend Dutch realizes what a great favor he has done us, inciting all this hate among the natives. Like you needed an excuse. Yeah. When do they ever need an excuse to kill more natives? This is what happens when you fraternize the savages. How could you ever follow a man like that? How could you ever follow a man like Ross? Vanderlyn is a psychopath, a murderer, and a rapist. Ross don't seem too different. Dutch was a good man once. A far better man than you. So what made him this way? I don't know. Bastards like you. Seeing that things never change. 100%. I'll be ready to finish this mess. Anything to get you sons of bitches off my back. There's always somebody watching, Mr. Marston. I thought you'd have gleaned that much by now. You think you're so clever, don't you? No, it's you who thought you were clever. You thought you could just walk away from your own life. Make no mistake, we have been watching. Don't speak to me. You're really an ungrateful slug, Marston. Instead of punishing you for your crimes, we are giving you a chance to kill the men who betrayed you. All we need now is Father Christmas. 
You didn't have to punish my wife, too. Oh, please. She's hardly innocent. Don't you talk about her like that. Oh, I would never talk ill of dear Abby. Do you call her Abby or Abigail? I prefer Abby. Oh, I like the woman. A little rough for my taste, but very pleasant. I can't <laughs> wait to put a bullet in your head. When will this be over? It's you who's been dragging it out, not us. We sent you to Fort Mercer with the simple task of killing Bill Williamson. Next thing you know, you're running all over Mexico like a headless chicken. And now it's Dutch. But he's the last one of your merry band, is he not? Then you can go back to your farm, or what's left of it. If need be, you can always send your wife back out to work. I hear she works hard. Go to hell! Absolute scum. So gang of yours just won't die easily, will it? I wonder how many deaths you are all responsible for. How much money you took from pockets of hard-working citizens? We did more for the people with the money we took than the damn government ever did. Good God! This flawed philosophy yours again. If you wish to argue the finer points of ethics, I suggest you learn to read first. And I suggest you learn how to shoot people in the front, not the back. Exactly. How far have we got to go? And like, even if Dutch somehow managed to kill everyone, including John, or like everyone, like, apart from John, like, the, they would still send out more feds, more army, like, the more, like, more soldiers, all of that. Like, Dutch could only hold out for so long. Because you think it must be that bad if they got to bring the army in for this. And it's not just the feds and the local law, like the sheriff or the police. And I would say Dutch chose a good spot up in the mountains where it's cold. And it's uphill too. Gives him the advantage. Because that's the thing. You could have very few men defend a very hard to reach spot. And have an enemy who outnumbers you like 10 to 1. And absolutely demolish them. If you defend it right. And like you're defending in a position like this. Where you could easily hold back hundreds of people. With like just a few dozen people. And why can't we have more soldiers of us or feds, sheriffs, police? But what's happening? Oh, I gotta move up, do I? So you're the one who's gonna kill him? Dutch? Yep, that's what they keep telling me. But if you feel like doing it, please be my guest. This is suicide if you ask me. My scouts have seen that fort of his. I wanted to wait for more men, but them city boys back there weren't having none of it. And you answer to them? Unfortunately, it seems that now we do. Not stupid. You, blow that gate open. Move, soldier. Oh, here we go. God damn it! Push forward! God damn it! I guess we ain't gonna be friends now. Move up! 
Yeah, I see him. Where is he? Oh shit. Alright, I'm gonna start moving in. Oh, Gavin, Gavin, how are you? Let me get on that. As he destroyed him. How am I leading them wide open? Where's the other one? Don't just stand there, do something. Everyone get back. Oh shit. Fire in the hole. You tend to your wounded. I got a face touch alone. Looks like it's me and you, John. You should have stayed at home. I suggest you follow me. Oh, that's not good. He's got a machine gun. Oh, I see. Get his ass. It's over, John. I ain't leaving here without you. Looks like it's just Dutch left. Seems like we killed all his boys, it's just me and him left. He hasn't got anywhere left to run. Where's he gonna go? He has nowhere left to run. Should just be up ahead. You can't erase the past, John. Killing me, it won't make it go away. 
way. That's where you're wrong. Yeah, I doubt even after this, after getting Bill. Oh. Stop meeting like this. Sure. I got a plan, John. You always got a plan, Dutch. This is a good one. I don't doubt it. We can't always fight nature, John. We can't fight change. Can't fight gravity. We can't fight nothing. My whole life, all I ever did was fight. Then give up, Dutch. But I can't give up, neither. I can't fight my own nature. That's a paradox, John. You see, and I have to shoot you. When I'm gone, They'll just find another monster. They have to. Because they have to justify their wages. That's their business. Our time has passed. Yeah. So at the end, you didn't have the guts to shoot him. The man's dead, Ross. Sure. Can I see your gun? Hmm. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. They better be. Thank you, Mr. Marston, for everything. I know this wasn't easy for you, but I have to say, You've done your country proud. Yeah, exactly. See you around, John. Try to stay out of trouble. Come on, Archer. Let's go find somebody else we can annoy. And it's over. Dutch is finally dead. We're done with the feds. Now we can head home to Peter's Hope. And reunite with our family, with Abigail, with Jack, and Uncle, I guess, if he's there. Blisters on my feet will call to hold me as I'm close. 